only 30 is the, the majority, the majority of the steam drifters, they went to the heron, and that was just the Yarmouth, and the, the winter heron, of course, that is, and the summer. And there was one or two that went to the sea net at the anchor method. Now this was carried on, I would say, until about 1933, when the last of that method of fishing was sea net. And of course then they started, the fleet started diminishing after that, by the, the steam drifter. Buck is a, a, a very large fleet of fishing boats, but they've never harboured much at home. Can you tell us why this is? Well, it's just the, it was bad geographically placed as a, in comparison to Fraser Baren and Peter Heed and Stonewall. They were, they were, uh, that was the places the Bucky fleet landed. For instance, Lerwick in the summer time and the, the early summer then they come south to Fraser Baren and Peter Heed. Then they finished up at uh, the, the east coast south at Yarmouth and Lostov. Does that mean to say that um, there are no fishing grounds close to, be, to Bucky at all? Nowadays or then? Then. The earliest, the closest at that period, I'm speaking about the 30s, the 30, 33, 34, 35, was a little while in the summer time at, at uh, Alpha Gamery. Then at the latter end, what they called the Clytheness herring. That was the, the end of uh, August. They used to be here at, at Clyde's Nest. But, uh, but between that, the, the Bucky fleet used to land in these said ports. At the same time, Bucky has built a lot of ships as well. There were three shipbuilding yards in Bucky. Aye, there was Jones, and there was Herdy Mackenzie's, and there's Thompson's. They all built, but I think this only was from the, the, the diesel fleet came on the go. The last boat, I think, the Heron boats, was the Lizzie Flett and was built in Bucky and heard the Mackenzie's. So, has, uh, has there a long history that the uh, Shibbon Yards are? Well, they're, they're still going yet, but they're emulgulated. The last two is emulgulated into one. Mm -hmm. Jones and Herdy Mackenzie are into one now, but John uh, Thompson's finished about three years back. I see. And the size of vessels that they built. Which one, the drifters? Or the, are you talking about the the so, modern ones? Yeah. Herdy Mackenzie, by the way, he, Herdy Mackenzie was the first man to start this type of what we call the tin boats, the steel boats. And they built, and he got his idea from the lakes in, the, in Canada. He was, of course, on a holiday there and he seen this boat and he came back and he, he built about seven, I think, in that same of that same design. But then they've they've went a wee bit further, not now, and they're to the modern steel boat. But the the majority was wooden built. So why would there be so much fishermen in Bucky, and so much craft in Bucky, uh, if the geographically it was placed bad? Why would that be? No, that's. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's one of the things you now that I can't really say why it was, but it, they just used to start from a seafarer and pleasantness and it built up. Of course, Terman Bucky, the boats in Bucky, you see, we, the fill that came from Cullen and Pernoke and Dochty, Pergordon, ah, uh, these villages, that was Term BCK Bucky boats. So it wasn't just solely the, the tuna Bucky at, the, at that size of fleet come oh, into being. And it, about about a couple of years after the Second World War, the CNET boat came more into the bean. And orders came so fast that the three yards and buggies just couldn't have cope with the orders. And orders came, we got boats built for uh, Fraser Baron, Peter Heed, even Montrose and the East Coast. Now, it and Bucky wasn't the only ones that was at that. The Lossy fleet were building. With the result that the fleet was just too big to contain in the Murray Firth. And we had to go to look for fishing grounds elsewhere. And that was when uh, the boats started going to the west coast. 
Lood e na bot a Lewis, in the mensch. Down at the Shetland, west coast of Shetland, east coast of Shetland, west coast of Orkneys. And that was all. That was all grounds. It was pioneered. But what we reckon was local people, uh, fishermen, bucky fishermen. Now, when I say bucky, I mean Colin and Pernocky and Bergordon is involved. Even in 1954, we had a fleet with boats going to to Norway to fish from, from Ollison in Norway and landing in Aberdeen. And even when the, <clears throat> in about 1961, a change of method came in to, away from a white fish, which was the prawn. And uh, it was Bucky boats, it was Bucky skippers that was involved there again, Jim Bruce and Alec Beam. That, they, that was the start of this, what they call the light trawling. And it's gradually increased to what it is now, it, into the, this bear trawling, but I'm out of my depth at this bear trawling. So that's, to me, that's the, the set-up in Bucky as regards uh, the method of fishing in the boats. In Bucky we had uh, at least two net factories. This was factories that made the sheets for the heron nets, the cotton heron nets. And they, empl they employed quite a number of girls. It was all women, at, uh, except the, the golfers, they were the men, but the majority of the workers were women. And also we had uh, three premises in Bucky that made, made the boys, the canvas boys. Now these, these canvas boys were cut and shaped. Then they were filled with a, an archangel tar to make them watertight. And that was the, the type of boys that we used. And then, then, we took over from them and they had to be painted twice a year to go to the heron fishing in the month of May and to go to the Yarmouth fishing in the month of September. They were, they, they, they not a lot of uh, uh, looking after. Then the, the, back to the, the nets again, the, the, they made a sheet of nets and it was a, the winter time our fishermen used to put them, make them into the, the net for them, put the corks on them and put the, the food ropes on them and, and what like. And the tannin, that was another job to them. When we got them, when they, 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 when they came out of the factory, they were white. Then they had to be tanned, what we call barking. So there'll be a lot of hustle and bustle about Bucky during the oh, fishing aye. times. Then. Oh, mercy, aye. aye. Especially, especially at the start to a, especially at the start to a season. A season. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah. not so much hustle and bustle about the place now? No, no, there's not so much hustle and bustle. <coughs> There's no preparation as we used to see. Larry loads well, cart loads of nets going down and cart loads of bows and cart loads of uh, other things. And you can every fishing. They used it to cutting him because maybe it was a, a change of crew to going to the, the young with fishing. So everything was staying him at the end of every fishing. You need a clean start again. And it was a year case. Uh, you know, of course there was the calf beds then, there was no such Dunlop pillars or nothing that time. It was out of the calf. But the boats itself, I mean, the, the drifters, I, I admire the drifter because, and I'd, I admire the men who get in, and I'm not speaking about me, but I'm, I'm, I admire the men who was afore me. Because that men, they had no, they had no navigational instruments but just a compass, solely the compass as regards now they have um, umpteen new, uh, navigational aids that they had now then. And they, they did a great thing. Uh, and sailing a ship in that days was an art. No, it's near art now. It's near art no longer. <coughs> 